It gives me great, great pleasure to introduce our honorary degree recipient, Peter Hall, to whom we award an honorary doctorate. Film and TV director Peter Hall has worked on several hit shows over the span of his career. From as young as the age of nine, he has been consumed with joy at the creative concept of TV shows, namely Doctor Who, which inspired him and made him determined to carve out his career. Peter's career in the arts continued to be influenced by his love for Doctor Who, and he was lucky enough to direct the mid-season finale in 2011, A Good Man Goes to War, which was the highest viewed program on BBC iPlayer. Then after working for Netflix, Marvel, and ITV, including shows like Daredevil, Vera, and the Umbrella Academy's pilot season, he also launched detective drama Shetland for ITV Studios BBC, which premiered to almost 7 million views. In 2019, Peter directed all five episodes of Channel 4's It's a Scene, which had over 6.5 million viewers in its first week, making it all four's biggest ever drama launch. Most recently, Peter directed Nolly, a three-part series starring Helena Bowman, Bowman Carter, which aired on ITVX in February 2023 to glowing reviews. He also recently directed the third episode of the new HBO series, The Last of Us, which has been hailed as one of the greatest episodes of TV drama in modern era. It is safe to say that Peter's had a momentous, had been a momentous career, and UAL is proud to honor him today. I'm delighted to ask the Chancellor to confer the Honorary Doctorate of University of the Arts London on Peter Hall. So nice, sorry. Hello. Um, thank you very much. I have to say I am incredibly honoured to receive this award, um, this doctorate, because uh, I just can't see how it could be me. I mean, my speech is going to reflect that. But thank you. Thank you, Kane. Thank you, uh, James. Thank you, Grayson. And um, also, can I thank Ian Fleming, who's at the back here, a very good dear friend of mine. Without him, I wouldn't be here at all, and I think you also love him too. So thank you very much, Ian. Um, that's better. And of course, congratulations. Thank you. You did it. Well done. Give yourself a round of applause. Bigger, bigger, bigger. Thank you. Um, I can't believe, yeah, I can't believe I'm here receiving this degree, uh, surrounded by such talented people behind me, in front of me, great artists, thinkers, creators, uh, the kind of people born to enrich the world around them. It's been tricky to think of one simple piece of advice, or any advice, that I could give you at this monumental crossroads in your life. What could, as I said to myself, what could these talented young minds possibly learn from this lucky nerd who watched far too much TV as a child? My mother is famously famous for saying, stop watching TV, it won't get you a job. Um, she was wrong. I, um, well look, let me start by telling you a little bit about this lucky nerd. Um, I am a director and I still watch far too much TV. Um, as mentioned by Ken, I used to watch Doctor Who and there were moments where I would literally take myself into the other room and lie down under the dining table because I had to process what had happened to myself and my little brain and um, this was before VHS recorders, yeah, it, yeah, I'm that old. And, um, you know, certain things were happening to me. One particular time I shall never forget was a giant pink snake in a Tudor mansion, psychic power dimensions, that sort of thing. Any Doctor Who fans, I'll give you a prize if you know which one it was. Um, I'll also never forget an episode of television from a show called Swap Shop, um, think eBay before the internet, um, where one day, one Saturday morning, without warning, the camera pulled away from the traditional film familiar set and followed the presenter, said Noel Edmonds, 
down the hallowed corridors of the BBC and in between various studios, finally ending up on the set of Doctor Who. And to me, nine years old, my mind was blown. It was like, that is a job, that is a career. Uh, firstly as well, gentle reminder, 1970s, much easier to be impressed back then. Um, BTS wasn't such a thing. But look, my nine-year-old head was spinning and it has never stopped spinning. So how did I get from under that dining table to the, uh, this stage at the Royal Festival Hall? I got here because I had support all along the way from incredible, beautiful, talented, secure people who saw something in me and gave me the opportunity to show it. They listened when I told them my passion for the work. Directors, writers, producers, actors, so many who took their time out to lift me up and help me along the way. At this stage, I now hope that I have been able to do that, to give some of that support back, and I will continue to do so. The belief in paying it forward. As you see your own careers unfold before you, I hope that in turn, you will do the same. And honestly, it can happen next year. It can happen in two or three years' time. It you don't have to wait till you get this old and successful uh, to, uh, to be able to do that. We are all, uh, in the absence of a government that actively supports the arts, it's important more than ever to work together to help each other succeed. But uh, there's a fear, a fear that one day someone will tap you on the shoulder and say, oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but uh, you got out of the wrong lift in 1991 and your real calling is data analysis. Um, apologies to any data uh, analysts here, but I had to choose something. Um, and why, would, why was it? Why did I always feel like I was a fraud? I think maybe part of the problem is that we aren't encouraged enough to be creative, to let our minds flood with ideas, colors, sounds, pictures, feelings. As creatives, we aren't really looking for definite, definitive answers or data. We're just intensely curious about everything. And I want to remind you that your responses to that curiosity are all unique to you. And no one can tell you that you're wrong. There is no wrong. And contrary to popular belief, there's also no handbook. Although from the moment you start in this career, everybody will refer to page one. And most importantly, remember this. Nobody knows anything. I, it was true for William Goldman in 1983, and it's almost certainly true now. Never forget that, honestly, never. I tell people this almost every day. Um, and also, how, how do you become a director is a question I'm often asked, and my favorite response is from a colleague, Robert Rodriguez, who said once, print yourself a business card with your name in big, bold type. Under that, put the word director. That's it. You're done. And I have to say I kind of agree, because why would you let, why wait to let somebody else tell you when you should be accepted as a creative voice? It took me far too long to realize this. I got too wrapped up in the idea that there was a proper way. Well, there isn't. There is your way, and it's a beautiful way. I, um, I have suffered from an anxiety disorder. It sounds so gr uh, uh, grim, but I mean, and also suffered. Well, to be clear, I say this not for sympathy. After all, I am standing here before you accepting a doctorate, so things aren't all bad. But I mention it because I genuinely believe I can look back now and say that it helped get me here. I was that person who thought about everything all the time, which yes, can be a bit of a burden, but it also meant that I was making myself aware of how everyone else might be thinking or feeling at any given time. This I have turned into my superpower. I make it a part of my job to ensure everybody feels heard, safe, supported, and enabled. So, graduates of 23, Whatever you go on to do, wherever you take the reins professionally, and I hope in the very near future, I implore you to put an end to such toxic workplaces that are regrettably still too familiar in our industry. Practice inclusion of all kinds. Show love and compassion and always acceptance. Be patient and kind. Listen. Above all, enjoy the journey. Learn from every single moment and every single person around you. Never let that nine-year-old head stop spinning. Remember, if your head is spinning, you're doing something right. And so maybe that's why I'm finally here then, 
on this stage in the Royal Festival Hall. It's my turn to learn from you. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.